to have better statistics. Now let me ask you a question on that. Do you think that the rape rate in the United States on college campuses is closer to 6 in 1,000 or 250 in 1,000? I, I definitely think it's somewhere in between, and I don't think I have... No, but I mean, like, if you, had to, if you had to try and peg a number. I mean, I, I understand that I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to iterate. I'm not, a, like, a scientist or a statistician, and I don't claim to, or posture to be, and I don't think you should either. If you don't have statistics... Do you, you think that it has increased 10,000%? No, 10, what I'm saying is, for you to criticize a certain community of using a statistic, one out of five, as sensational or ridiculous... Because the people who actually created that statistic say that it's being misused. Sure, and you're using a statistic that's 20 years old, because it's the best statistic available. Again, if you're willing to give me better statistics, I am more than willing to hear them. No, and as great. I've said, if you provide me new evidence, I'm more than willing to change right, my mind. Great, yeah. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have the political knowledge to, to, to debate that. So like, just, I, just a couple things. So moving forward, I think you talked about, um, I don't know, you said, like, you mentioned Jim Crow laws and, and slavery for what kind of pushed uh, black people back. And you said, okay, th this is in the past. Again, this is an example of taking the, the opposition's argument, making a character of it, and dropping it down real fast. Everyone knows about Jim Crow, everyone knows about slavery. Not as many people know about, for example, redlining in, the Chicago, in Chicago in, in, in the 1960s that the CBL had to push out by 1964. The, these kinds of systems have been entrenched for years. I think uh, most people have read uh, Tanya C. Coates' article on, on how this has developed a, a you know, system of entrenchment for these communities. Even today, uh, under Rahm Emanuel, who's a Democrat and I think is wrong, um, implements TIF increment financing that takes money out of Western and, and Southern uh, Chicago and, and reappropriates them to places that don't really need it as much. Clearly there's a lack of funding. He closed 47 schools over the past year. What I'm basically trying to say is there's a lot of factors going on in these communities that are predominantly black, Hispanic, et cetera. And for you to simply say that, okay, Jim Crow happened 50 years ago, racism hasn't increased, is, is a bit, I, I think, again, insincere. Because I don't believe that racism has, I do believe that racism has decreased. And you know, yeah, we're, we're saying the N-word less, sure. But I don't think that racism at a systemic level has decreased because the same communities that were affected in the 1960s, you know, those people are still alive. That's a, that's a wild accusation. I mean, that, like, I'm, I'm with you all the way up till the end. When, okay. when, when you say there's a lot of complexity to these arguments, I agree there's a lot sure, of complexity sure. to these arguments. Yeah, I'll okay. tell you where there is no complexity, and that is the only way you are going to get out of the current problems that you are in is by relying on yourself to make good decisions. That's not to say that there aren't obstacles, and if there are obstacles that you can name, I'm more than happy to stand there and fight them with you. If you can show me evidence of redlining by a bank in which a black person and a white person are being treated unequally with exactly the same application, I will stand next to you and root for them to be prosecuted in court because that's illegal under the Civil Rights Act. But if you're going to suggest that racism has not decreased over the last 50 years, it's just sort of hidden, there is no evidence to suggest that whatsoever. 